okay so uh, good morning to all and uh, welcome to lecture number 21 so in this basically we will be studying uh, uh, how to basically represent the object uh, with the help of skeleton and then later on how to construct the graph uh, from the skeleton and so on so actually uh, in this lecture we'll be restricting ourselves uh, in uh, this one um, uh, only uh, uh, studying this, uh, how to obtain the skeleton. So that part we will study in this. And then in next lecture, we'll be studying how to obtain the graph from the skeleton. And then how graph-based me methods can be used for the detection of the object in the computer vision and so on. So um, uh, uh, basically, uh, you know that in many computer vision application, the object in the scene can be characterized satisfactorily by structure composed of lines or arc patterns, uh, for example, handwritten or a printed character. I told you earlier also uh, that the basic feature of in a computer vision are like as a texture or color and then shape. But out of this uh, color and texture and shape, shape is most important part and this shape consist of edges and so on. So edges can be a straight, uh, straight line or it can be a, uh, it, uh, edges can be composed of arcs or circular or uh, this one, uh, straight line and so on. So you can see that handwritten characters also, they have the um, uh, means arcs or straight line and then circular kind of things and so on. Okay, so earlier, in earlier talk, we talked about how to represent the shape uh, by using a counter-based approach and then uh, uh, in that we studied like as a chain code method and then uh, perimeter and then uh, several other uh, methods for okay based on the computer uh, contour and then later on we studied about how to represent the shape by using the region and can consider the entire region so in that we studied about um, okay how to represent the shape by using area then uh, island number uh, then uh, basically uh, moments and so on so other uh, um, uh, eccentricity elongatedness then bounding box and so on so all those features are based on the entire region and so on now uh, so basically that gives you uh, the feature in the form of numericals or in the forms of number and then those features can be used in statistical approach for recognizing the object and so on Another way for representing the uh, edges or uh, this one shape can be done by using the skeleton. And then from skeleton, we can obtain the graph and then graph based matching techniques can be used effectively um, uh, for uh, recognizing any object or identification and then prediction and so on. So in many computer vision application, the com object in a scene can be characterized satisfactorily by structure. So basically from the, uh, you, you can see that you might have seen uh, in your 12th class or okay, in 8th class or like that, the skeleton of the human body. So uh, skeleton means basically you get the structure of the human body and so on. So similarly, can we obtain the skeleton of the object and then from that skeleton of the object, can you um, uh, develop a method which we, which okay of recognizing the object based on the structure of the object and so on. So yes, it is possible and it gives very good result um, uh, for recognition and so on. So in such a situation, basically whatever the skeleton you get, uh, uh, the thickness of that pattern does not contribute to the uh, recognition process. And uh, mainly the skeleton in the object recognition here or basically in a computer vision uh, is of one pixel wide thickness and so on. So uh, that is the region graph is based on the region skeleton. And the first step is, uh, okay, for before constructing the graph, you have to obtain the skeleton of the object. And um, uh, that is nothing but the structure of the object and so on. So uh, what are the basic approaches for obtaining the skeleton or construction of the skeleton? So uh, basically here, uh, in, from the object, you have to thin that object uh, 
uh, iteratively by removing the region boundary pixel and then obtain the uh, structure of that object which is having only one pixel uh, thick and so on so iteratively you have to thin from the top from the left uh, okay from the left from the right from the bottom and then uh, you have to obtain the skeleton of the object uh, so th thinning is one of the way Another way is wave propagation from the boundary. So what is that wave propagation from the boundary? We'll see that medial axis uh, transform and so on. And then uh, third approach is detection of local maxima in the distance transform image of the region and so on. And then, uh, okay, analytical methods are there. So in literature, there are several methods proposed for, to obtain the skeleton. So we'll see uh, one medial axis uh, transform based method. Uh, and then, uh, okay, how, uh, skeleton of the object can be obtained and so on so that we will study uh, in this talk and so on now what are the expected properties of skeletonization uh, algorithm means when you are developing any uh, skeleton algorithm what is expected from that one so first expectation is homotopy uh, and that homotopy means skeleton must preserve the topology of the original shape and image so whatever the shape you have Okay, so its topology should be preserved. Otherwise, if yeah, okay, by after obtaining the skeleton, if, if its topology is changing, then there is no use of that uh, uh, algorithm and so on. So. First and most important thing is that when you are obtaining or when you are proposing any method for obtaining the skeleton of the object, uh, then this method should preserve the topology of the original shape. So topology should be preserved. So that is the first requirement of the algorithm of skeletonization. Second requirement is that uh, when you're obtaining the skeleton of the object, okay, uh, then this skeleton should be basically one pixel thickness. Now I'll, I'll show, okay, just you can imagine that uh, this one, a skeleton of the human body. So you'll get only the structure of the human body and so on. And when you are representing in the image form, so this structure should be of, of only one pixel uh, thick and so on. So uh, the skeleton should be made of one pixel thick line and so on. So that is the next uh, second requirement when you are developing any algorithm for skeletonization. The third requirement is that our expected property of the skeletonization algorithm is that mediality. That is, the skeleton should be positioned in the middle of the shape. Okay, so the boundary pixels. Okay, whenever you have obtained the skeleton, I just I'll show you for understanding purpose uh, the skeleton uh, of the object. Uh, like for example, uh, this is the shape okay and uh, then uh, this is the skeleton of the object so this is one pixel uh, wide and then see that this skeleton is having equal distance from this boundary this boundary and uh, so on so like that way so even if you consider any points so it will be having equal distance and so on uh, similarly this is the circular object and this is the skeleton of the object and so on so how do you obtain that skeleton that will study later on but just understand and that see for this shape also uh, this is the skeleton which is obtained for this shape see that uh, topology is preserved here right so for this shape also skeleton is like this so all those boundary pixels will be having equal distance from this uh, skeleton whatever you have obtained or if these are the two pix um, uh, circles the skeleton of the object will be like that uh, the uh, one dot here dot here and then see so on Okay, so this is expected basically. So it should be at the center, so skeleton should be at the center. Second thing is that it should preserve the topology of the object. Okay, and third thing is that this skeleton, whatever the skeleton you are going to obtain with your algorithm, it should have a thickness of only one pixel wide, right? So, uh, so this is, uh, okay, uh, one pixel thickness and then uh, skeleton should preserve the topology of original shape or the image and then mediality, that is the skeleton should be positioned in the middle of the shape, that is with all skeleton points having the same distance from the two closest points of an object boundary. So that is the third requirement. The fourth requirement is that the, whenever you are obtaining the skeleton of the object, it should have the property of rotation invariance. 
So in a discrete space, this can only be satisfied for rotation angles with uh, which are multiples of pi by two, and but should be approximately satisfied for other angles also. So even if it is rotated, the object is rotated, your skeleton should be same. Right for the same object and so on, even if it is rotated by 38 degree or 45 degree or 60 degree or 90 degree or any angle, it should the skeleton should be same for all the objects and so on. Right, and the fourth thing is that noise immunity. So whenever you are obtaining the skeleton, uh, it should be insensitive to the shape boundary noise. Uh, but most of the algorithm fails here, and uh, okay. Uh, very few algorithms basically uh, satisfy this property. So because this is contradicting and so on. So these are the five property expected properties of any skeleton algorithm uh, or uh, when you are representing the topology of the object with the help of skeleton and so on. So first one is homotopy. That is skeleton must preserve the topology of the original shape. Second one is that skeleton, whatever you are obtaining with the proposed algorithm, it should be of one pixel thick line. Third thing is that mediality, that is skeleton should be positioned in the middle of the shape with all skeleton points having the same distance from the two closest points on the object boundary. Fourth thing is that skeleton, whatever you are obtaining, it should be having the property of rotation invariance. And the fifth requirement is that it should have good noise immunity. So skeleton should be insensitive to the shape boundary noise and so on. So these are the expected properties of a skeletonization algorithm. Now, what are the basics of thinning? See, thinning is one of the process for obtaining the uh, skeleton. Thinning means basically you are obtaining uh, okay one pixel uh, wide uh, okay one pixel wide uh, structure of the object uh, with the help of thinning and so on. So you are removing the extra pixels and then you are keeping only the pixel uh, okay which will represent the skeleton. So it is basically a search and delete process means. Uh, okay, it is a basically search and delete process that removes only the boundary pixels whose deletion. See, when you are deleting any pixel to obtain the skeleton by using thinning algorithm, at that time you have to check whether that uh, when you are deleting, it should not change the connectivity of the neighbors locally. Uh, so uh, it should preserve the connectivity like as a four connectivity or eight connectivity and so on. Otherwise, if you are deleting that pixel and if it is breaking that connectivity, then you will not get the correct uh, uh, skeleton of the object. So when you are okay, deleting any pixel, you have to check whether it is breaking the connectivity. If it is breaking, then you don't have to delete that. Okay, if it is not breaking the connectivity, then you can remove that uh, pixel and so on. So this is the first requirement. Okay, first thing that you have to uh, look. And second thing is that it should not reduce the length of an already thin curve. So for example, uh, you have obtained the thin curve, uh, like for example, uh, here, uh, you have obtained the thin curve. Now, so for example, if you remove this uh, pixel, then its length will change or its length will reduce. So you cannot reduce, okay, uh, remove that pixel. Okay. Or so for example, if you are removing this pixel, then its connectivity will be uh, broken and so on. So you cannot remove that pixel. So you have to identify which basically pixel you should remove and which pixel you should uh, keep. So pixel. If it is breaking the connectivity, you cannot remove that pixel. If a uh, pixel, if it is reducing the length of that uh, um, uh, skeleton, you cannot remove that pixel and so on. So these are the basically uh, 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 rules basically uh, while doing the thinnings. So most, uh, most thinning procedures repeatedly remove boundary elements until a pixel set with maximum thickness of one or two is found. So thickness of that skeleton should not be more than one or uh, two. So in general, these methods can be either sequential, so you can do it sequentially, or you can do it iteratively uh, by changing the direction, or you can do it parallelly from all these directions, or um, uh, you can do it iteratively and fully parallelly. So the algorithms, okay, whatever the uh, algorithms which are proposed in literature, either they are only uh, sequential algorithms or they are iteratively uh, directional parallelly or they are iteratively and fully parallel and so on so like that way then uh, see that uh, as i told you that when you are thinning the object 
uh, or some uh, object uh, and then you are obtaining the skeleton of the object uh, you have to identify which is the critical pixel so critical pixel is the pixel whose deletion changes the connectivity as i said that when you uh, this one first rule do not change the connectivity of their uh, neighbors locally so uh, the pixel okay if you are deleting that pixel and then uh, if its connectivity is changing or uh, it is breaking locally then that pixel is considered as a critical pixel you so you cannot remove that critical pixel so at identify if okay if you remove that pixel whether that connectivity is going to break uh, whether it is a four connectivity or eight connectivity so you have to identify that okay whether that pixel is a critical pixel if that pixel is a critical pixel then you cannot delete that pixel while doing the thinning second thing is that the end pixel okay you have to identify see that when see when we can say that critical pixel which is the critical pixel basically okay the center pixel which is having the connectivity like as the pixel to the left as well as right is there and then if you are uh, deleting that central pixel then it will break the connectivity so critical pixel will have the uh, at least two neighbors basically okay if you are considering uh, um, like uh, for example horizontal line then uh, any pixel if you are considering so it will have two neighbor one is at the left side another one is at the right side and then if you are, okay, if you delete that pixel under consideration then it will break the connectivity so that is the uh, this one uh, uh, critical pixel so you cannot remove that critical pixel like for example if there is a junction like as the plus sign is there or uh, this one is there so there will be more than two uh, pixels which are um, uh, this one uh neighboring pixels and then you have to check whether it is a four connected or eight connected and then whether it is a critical pixel and so on then another thing is that end pixel see that when you are considering the end pixel like as for example this is the skeleton of the object and the last uh, point is the uh, last pixel is the end pixel now for last pixel end pixel how many uh, uh, neighbors are there to the right there is no neighbor but to the left there is a neighbor so there is only one neighbor if the pixel is having only one neighbor then that pixel is considered as an end pixel now end, end pixel you cannot remove that one because if you remove that end pixel its length will reduce okay so uh, okay you have to identify uh, in the skeleton you have to identify whether that pixel is a critical pixel if it is critical pixel don't remove that one if it is end pixel then don't remove that ones so i told you that how to identify the critical pixel so in case of critical pixel at least there are two neighbors okay so if there are two neighbors don't remove that uh, the pixel under considerations okay so because that is a critical pixel second pixel is end pixel where there is one neighbor okay and if that pixel is having only one neighbor then that pixel under consideration is considered as an end pixel and don't remove that end pixel while doing the thinning because it will change the length of skeleton so number of neighboring pixel of an end pixel is less than 2 right whereas uh, number of neighboring pixel in critical pixel will be at least 2 right so thinning process always use the medial axis transforms as i told you that this is very uh, 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 well known method uh, for obtaining the uh, skeleton of the object so what is that medial axis okay now i'll just give the example like for example you might have seen the cricket ground right uh, so cricket ground is basically uh, this one uh, round in shape right now and this uh, okay um, on the entire cricket ground there is a grass right now if this grass is dry grass okay assume that cricket ground is round in shape and the grass which is there on the cricket ground is a dry grass and if you like for example if you set the fire line along this uh, entire uh, uh, perimeter of the cricket ground so this grass will start burning now so this burning line will basically come towards inside and then where it will meet it will meet at the center of that uh, this one uh, cricket ground and that center point is nothing but a uh, basically a uh, skeleton of that uh, 
object or skeleton of that cricket ground. So medial axis is similar to that concept. Okay. So see that suppose that a fire line propagates with this constant speed. See that fire line around that cricket ground, which is having the dry grass. Okay is propagated with this constant speed so definitely that grass will start burning from uh, okay all the uh, side and then this fire line will come and meet at the center of this one so suppose that a fire line prepared propagates with a constant speed from the counter of the connected object towards its inside okay and where that fire line melt meets that is considered as a medial axis so then all those points lying in the position where at least two wave fronts of the fire line meet during the propagation will constitute a form of skeleton and this is called as the medial axis of the object so medial axis of the object is nothing but the skeleton right so you are removing basically all those uh, pixels uh, uh, and so on so uh, with the help of this uh, okay uh, uh, medial axis transform how thinning procedure is done so thinning procedures often use a medial axis transform i hope that you might have understood what is meant by uh, medial axis transform right so uh, medial axis transform so thinning procedure uh, often use a medial axis transform also symmetric axis transform uh, so whatever the axis you get it is symmetric from the uh, all the end points or all the boundary points and so on so to construct a region skeleton and this was proposed by um, uh, Pavlidis in 1977 and then also um, uh, summit in 1985 and then Pfizer in 1987 and then Lamb in 1992 and then right uh, okay and false side in 1993 with modification and so on so you can see those algorithms which are available in the literature so under the medial axis definition the skeleton is the set of all the region points which have the same minimum distance from the region boundary so whatever you are going to obtain the skeleton it will have the same distance or same minimum distance from the region boundary for at least two separate boundary points right so such a skeleton can be constructed using a distance transform which assigns a value to each region pixel representing its minimum distance from the region boundary and the skeleton is then determined as the set of the pixel whose distance from the neighbor's boundary region's boundary is locally maximal right so uh, this is the uh, basically principle which is used in medial axis transform and then after okay once you get this medial axis of the given object as a post processing step local maxima can be detected using operators that detect the linear features and root profiles so that was proposed in uh, by right uh, and false side in 1993 so every skeleton element can be accompanied by information about its distance from the boundary so what is there in the skeleton the information about the boundary how much distance is there from the boundary and if you have this information you can reconstruct that object back so this gives the potential to reconstruct the region as an envelope curve of circles with center point at skeleton element and ready corresponding to the uh, stored distance uh, values and so on so if you have the information about the distance from the boundary along with the skeleton point then that will help you to reconstruct that object see that in the scalar features whatever we have obtained by using either boundary based or contour based and then region based we were not able to reconstruct that object but in the skeleton if you have this in information about the boundary uh, distance from the boundary with the skeleton point then it is possible to reconstruct that object back so this is the advantage of uh, structural representation of the object and so on so same description can be derived from this skeleton but with the exception of elongatedness and the evaluation can be difficult right so in addition uh, this skeleton's construction is time consuming. Definitely, you have to reduce uh, okay, the pixels from all the side 
and then it uh, okay it is time consuming and is uh, and the result is highly sensitive to the boundary noise and error so sometimes it may happen that if there is a uh, boundary noise is there uh, and uh, okay pixels uh, um, uh, noisy pixels are there then it may create a problem and then uh, your skeletal structure may change and so on so small changes in the boundary may cause serious changes in the skeleton and this sensitivity can be removed by uh, first representing the region as a polygon and then constructing the skeleton and then boundary noise removal can be observed into the polygon construction uh, sometimes people have now recently people have used a multi resolution approach also to obtain the skeleton uh, like as a skull space approach uh, which can be also used for a skeleton construction uh, and this results in the decreased sensitivity to the boundary noise. So to remove the boundary noise, Kaspers approach can be also used, uh, which was proposed by Pfizer in 1987 and Margos uh, in 1989. Similarly, the approach using the MAR and HILT age detector with the varying smoothing parameter fac okay, facilitate the scale-based representation of the region skeleton. So with uh, different scales, you can obtain the skeleton of the object. And this was proposed by Wright and Paul Side in 1993. So scale space approach or multi-resolution approach can be also used for removing, the, okay, overcoming the problem of noise in the skeleton. And so as I told you that there are various approaches available for thinning the object, uh, okay, thinning process, uh, thinning process is there or medial axis transform is there or multi-resolution approach is there to obtain the skeleton. So to obtain the skeleton, there are various approaches available in the literature. So you can, uh, so this is the example of thinning. See that, for example, this is the object. Now, if you set the fire line, Okay, if you set the fire line, assuming that, uh, okay, all the uh, boundary points are set with the fire line at same time. So what will happen? So this basically, this fire line will propagate inside. So the, all those points, okay. So where this fire line will meet? So definitely this fire line will meet at this one. And then you have to keep this pixel. So, okay, definitely this fire line, it comes from this side. And if it comes with the same speed for this one, so it will meet. So you will get the line. And this is called the middle axis of that one. And that will give you the skeleton of the object. Now, in case of uh, uh, this one, uh, image also, what you have to do, you have to basically opt uh, develop the procedure with, to remove the uh, pixels and then uh, from all sides, like for example, the top side and the right side and then bottom side and then left side. And then, okay, you have to keep the pixels, okay, such that it will be of one pixel thick and then uh, uh, you cannot remove that, the you cannot remove the pixels which will, rem okay, uh, break the continuity, uh, connectivity, and also it will uh, change the length of that one. So uh, you have to identify which are the critical pixels and which are the end pixels in that and then develop the algorithm. So this is the skeleton for this object, okay, in this shape. And then, as I said that, see, this is, the, suppose, for example, this is the cricket ground, and then this cricket ground basically consists of the dry grass, and if you set the fire line along all the pixels or okay boundary point with uh, same speed or constant speed so definitely this grass will start burning and then where this burning point will meet at the center so skeleton of the object or medial axis of the uh, circular object will be just simple dot centroid of that one right then okay if two uh, uh, are there and then definitely this fire line will meet here and here and here so you'll get three dots so three dots are nothing but two circular objects which are uh, okay side by side then so for example if it, this is kind of the uh, lips kind of uh, shape so definitely this fire line will meet here so you have to keep those okay so this is the medial axis which is obtained with this uh, of this shape similarly so this topology is preserved okay and you have only one thick uh, one pixel thick uh, skeleton so for this object also skeleton will be like this for this object okay rectangular you will get the skeleton like this okay so skeletons once you obtain the skeleton uh, from that we can next obtain the uh, graph and so on so these are more examples like as a, this is the key so for key also you'll get the skeleton of the object or like this or this shape okay like this you'll get 
So like that way, you will get uh, the skeleton of the object uh, by thinning and so on. I uh, will see one numerical example how thinning can be done and so on. Uh, like for example, thin the following image. So this is the given image and this is the binary image, right? So all those pixels are one, one uh, means, okay, um, these boundary pixels are there and zero means background. Okay, so this is background and uh, remaining are, uh, okay, uh, the object pixels are there. Now you have to obtain the skeleton of this object, which is of only one pixel thick, right? So what you have to do, you have to thin the object uh, from all sides. So we'll start from thinning the object uh, from right side. So definitely we cannot remove that, uh, this uh, pixel, because if we remove, its length will change. You can remove this one, its length will not change. You can not remove this one because its length will change and so on. So this pixel and this pixel are considered as the end pixel, but this pixel can be removed. Then after that, so uh, thinning from the right side is done. Then after that, thinning from the left side, see that. You cannot remove this pixel and this pixel, you can remove this one because these are considered as the end pixel and uh, thinning can be done. Then uh, left side is or right side is or then we can remove the thin, okay, uh, pixel from the top. So uh, you cannot remove this one because this end pixel and this is also end pixel. Uh, uh, these pixels can be removed because its connectivity will not change because, okay, there, there are more many more pixels available here. So. Uh, if you remove, uh, you do the thinning from the top side, you'll get uh, these pixels will be removed and so on. Then fourth step is that suppose, for example, see, we have done from right, left, top, and now it will be bottom side. So bottom side, if you remove the pixels, uh, so you can remove this pixel. Uh, okay, you cannot remove this pixel because this is any pixel, this pixel and this pixel can be removed. And uh, then this pixel cannot be removed because this is considered as an end pixel. Uh, then this pixel, okay, up to this pixel, we can remove. And then you will get, see, you cannot remove this pixel because this will break the continuity. You cannot remove this pixel because this will break the continuity. You cannot remove this pixel because this will remove the uh, continuity and so on. Right, you cannot remove the pixel because this will break the continuity and so on. So you have to check all those uh, things. So whatever you get, basically either it is a one pixel thick or at the most two pixel thick. Uh, this one. So this will be the final result of uh, skeleton, uh, skeleton just by thinning from all the sides, okay, iteratively and so on. Right. So this is a simple example which I have taken of the thinning. And uh, this finishes about okay how to obtain the skeleton of the object uh, with the different approaches. And then in our next lecture, we'll be studying about how to obtain the graph from the skeleton. So once we have obtained the skeleton of the object, next thing is that we have to obtain the graph. And then after that, the graph-based matching technique can be used for uh, recognition of the object uh, in the computer vision and so on. So uh, this finishes about skeletonization of the object and so on so thank you very much so um, tomorrow, uh, in our next lecture we'll be studying about how to obtain the graph of the object and so on right so